Good afternoon, everyone. This is Team RI Soccer, consisting of Christopher, Zachary, Pritish, and Arnav. On to our self-introductions now. Christopher and Arnav were mainly working on software, and Zachary and Pritish on hardware. Christopher has prior experience in soccer lightweight, but the rest only have experience in rescue. On to hardware. We have three layers of PCBs and a handle. PCBs are used to reduce the connection of components via wires, since wires are less durable and not as secure. They were designed using AutoCAD and traces were done in EasyEda. On the middle plate, two component eyes are mounted in a standard, one facing forward and the other facing backwards for 360 degree, degree vision. A motor driver is mounted above the plate, a ball capture zone is included, as well as a slot to accommodate the battery. On the top plate, the Teensy 3.5 reads from ultrasonic sensors, a UM7 compass, and the Teensy LC on the bottom plate. We had a mix of ultrasounds as we had insufficient joint max ultrasounds. A voltage regulator is used to convert the 12 volts from the motor driver to 5 volts. On the bottom plate are our motors and boundary detection system. A red LED ring illuminates the field for the temp 6000 light sensors to detect. The thin CLC reads from the 12 temps and outputs a direction via serial to the thin 3.5 if a boundary is detected via a serial port. On to our software. We use Git for version control and Platform IO and VS Code to program the microcontrollers. Our source code is split into mainly three parts drivers and libraries, striker and goalie logic, and example test codes. Our test code ran on the microcontrollers and targeted specific hardware. Temps were tested by shining an LED at them individually and checking if the readings changed accordingly. We ensured the LED ring was functional by sending commands for different colors periodically and checking for changes. Ultrasounds were tested and calibrated by moving a solid board a certain distance away from the sensor and comparing the readings with the actual distance. The compass was calibrated using the Redshift serial interface and tested by implementing compass correction on the board. Compound eyes were tested by moving the IR ball around them and checking if the output angle and corresponding intensities were accurate. Motors were tested by making the bot move in a specific direction. One problem faced was that the compass would drift over time. Instead, we used the raw readings which did not drift but were more erratic. Initial readings were taken at startup to account for offsets. Stable yaw readings meant that localization could also be more accurate. Another problem is that the ultrasounds were unstable, though the peaks were usually accurate. The sensors on both sides of the bot are used to calculate the position unless the reading is wrong, reducing the error caused by being blocked by obstacles. For ball tracking, the distance is estimated using the highest intensity and the angle is calculated using the channel with set highest intensity and interpolated between the two adjacent sensors. However, in the rare case that it does, the rotation of the ball causes the intensity of the IR to be wrong. With the angle and distance, the bot can move towards the ball. As the robot comes from in front towards the ball, it orbits more around the ball when approaching. As the robot goes behind the ball, it will do its assigned job, which we will cover later on. Now on to strategy. We use a goalie and striker so that the whole field is covered, making it more difficult for the enemies to score. Using, the, using two strikers is unfavorable as the goal would be unguarded and the enemy can easily score if it gets past the strikers. The goalie guards the goal and intercepts the incoming ball. It only moves on the x-axis to stay in front of the ball. As seen from the video below, the robot either rebounds the ball off course away from the goal, 
or in special cases where the ball lands into the ball capture zone, pushes the ball forward slight slightly, in theory, towards the striker. The striker engages in scoring most of the time. It can receive the ball from the goalie when the goalie pushes it forward, or it can intercept the ball on the field and rush towards the goal. As can be seen in the video, the ball has to orbit around the ball before it can start scoring. This has led to a situation where it overcorrects the orbiting, orbiting, causing it to orbit back and forth behind the ball without capturing it. From the video, it seems that the striker is able to capture the ball at any position. However, it is hard for us to use the goalie effectively as one of the motors for the goalie does not work properly. Additionally, the boundary detection for both robots stopped working, which can be, av can be avoided in the future by making sure they work beforehand. As can be seen in the video, the striker is effective in capturing the ball and trying to score in the goal. The goalie is also able to intercept the ball in time. However, the goalie was not able to get to the striker in time to intercept the ball sometimes, which will need to be fixed in the future. On to the technical challenge. The bot decides which side of the field it is on and moves behind the obstacle to try to detect the ball. It then tries to capture it and curve around the obstacle to get to the goal and score. Unfortunately, our boundary detection stopped working and we did not have enough time to fix it. We will make sure that every part of the bot works next time. Additionally, the bot hit the obstacle quite a few times, which can be avoided by adding a camera, which helps with localization and aiming too. The robot could also not capture the ball sometimes, which could be addressed by tuning the constants better. On to our conclusions. Over the course of this competition, we realized the importance of time management and learning to move on and not dwell on something for too long. We only began work in October, as examinations made it difficult to start work earlier. We had initially planned to re redesign the bot, but the delays and slow start we had ultimately prevented us from doing so. We also focused too much on one bot, causing the other to fall short of expectations and ability. Things also did not go our way all the time, like how the temps would sometimes break, forcing us to resolder them and how the PCBs would sometimes start shorting randomly, which we still don't know the reason for. Nevertheless, we improved our technical skills like soldering, cadding, and programming, as most of us were new to soccer and didn't know how the bot worked before this competition. There are a few improvements we would like to make for hardware. Firstly, the I2C bus sometimes hangs during testing, which may be due to barely working hardware. We are currently also searching for better ultrasounds that are more stable and have a longer range for better localization. We plan to add a sensor for detecting ball captures rather than to go on ball intensity alone. For software, we should organize our code better as large chunks of the goalie and striker code are currently the same. We also can add a boolean which we manually set. In addition, we want to also improve our localization and confidence calculation to account for obstacles more accurately. We should also make better use of the goalie, so that it can do more than just defend a goal. Thank you.